Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday morning virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We're so glad that you've joined us, either through Facebook Live or Zoom. Let's begin our service with our opening chant, One with the One, led by our wonderful Dean Regan, Sam Krieger, and Karen Smith. I live, I move, I have my being in God. I am God is, I am one with the one. You live. So now, let's join together in prayer. Turning our attention inward, allowing ourselves to feel that connection with the one. For truly, there's only one life, one infinite, invisible, pure love and infinite intelligence, creativity, that I call God, out of which all creation comes into being. And this one and its nature inhabits every part of creation. Everything in this manifest universe is an expression of the one life of God, including each and every one of us gathered together this morning for this service. I absolutely know that God is unfolding throughout our time together. We feel that vibration of God's love in which we are all interconnected, whether we're physically together or not. That vibration of love is moving through each and every one of those who are of service this morning. I know that we're uplifted by God flowing through our musicians, Sam and Karen, through our soloist, Gia, 
and her husband, Chris, who accompanies her. And we absolutely know that Dean, who's leading our chants, are all expressions of the divine. And I know that we hear the perfect word of God, that word that reminds us of the truth of that divine essence that lives at the center of our being through Dr. Mark this morning, that he is that vessel through which we hear exactly what we need to hear to awaken to that goodness within us and around us to experience it more fully in our lives. And so I give thanks right here, right now, for all the blessings I know we receive during this time together. And so in deep gratitude, I release this word knowing it's already done in the mind of God. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. So now, please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so now let's join in our congregational song. It's in every one of us. It's in every Oh, ha. 
have everything without ever knowing how. It's in every one of us here and now. So now this is the time in our service where we give ourselves the gift of just getting still for five minutes, turning within and communing with that, that presence within. So for the next five minutes as we meditate, I invite you to silently repeat the phrase, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Let that be your mantra for the next five minutes and I will bring us out of meditation at that time.
The words I have to say may well be simple, but they're true. Until you give your love, there's nothing more that we can do. Thank you, Gia and Chris. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, good morning and welcome to Virtual Church. We are so happy to have you with us. If you happen to be with us for our concert on Friday night, we are so grateful that you joined us. My understanding is it's still available for a few more days. So if you call the church, we will give you um, a little code and you can watch the concert. Uh, so if you want to be part of our fundraiser, which we would really appreciate, we thank you for that. So today, I'm going to talk about, you know, God and stuff, stuff I talk about all the time. So in, in the science of mind, you know, for us, God or spirit is supreme, it's infinite, it's limitless. In fact, Ernest Holmes says it's supreme, it's infinite, it's limitless personality. 
Now that's very interesting to me. He says that we should think of the divine as responsive to everything we do. Gosh, I love that because that shows us right there that we are in a relationship with something that is always, always responding to us. It's not an occasional response. It's not if we pray the right words kind of response. It's not if we beg hard enough response. It's always, always responding to everything that we do. So there should come to us, I think, a sense of communion, a spontaneous sense of our union with the one. Right? That we should just be able to feel connected to the one, to the infinite. And if we had this, I believe that according to our teaching in the science of mind, we would demonstrate, we would have healing, we would have manifestation instantly. We would. See, because all that we are is God, yet God is more than all all that we are. That's the way Ernest Holmes says it in our textbook. He says, God is all that we are, yet God is more. All that we are is God, yet God is more than all we are. I have to say that. That's, that's difficult to say. So the way we sing it sometimes is, I am part of the great mind of God, and God is all that I am. God is love, God is peace, God is life itself, and God is all that I am. But you'll notice in that chant, when we say, I am part of the great mind of God. I'm not all the great mind of God. I didn't have anything to do with creating seasons or uh, taking seeds and putting the intelligence in a seed to turn it into a flower or an embryo into a baby. I have nothing to do with that. But the same power, the same intelligence, the same principle that's within all of creation that's doing those extraordinary things is the principle that's within us seeking to do extraordinary and amazing things with our life here for the time that we're on earth. The Bible, I think, teaches us that no matter what you're seeking, if we look through a metaphysical lens, it exists right now. So why wait for healing? I think that's a myth, that we have to wait for healing. Oh, this is going to take a long time. Oh, I'm going to have to work on this for months. I'm going to have to hire you know, a team of specialists to work on my behalf. Perhaps, perhaps, but you know, no matter what you are seeking, it exists right now. We teach in the science of mind that God does not do something different because you and I start to pray. God is busy being God in its fullness all the time. But when we pray, we come more into alignment with what God is. And that way, it seems like life starts to really flow in our direction. See, the power of the Almighty exists within each and every one of us. And what we are seeking in the future, now this is, this is, this is one of those things that kind of makes my head want to explode. What we are seeking in the future actually exists right now. Oh my God. You know, so, so we know that there is more to us than this physical body, right? I mean, don't you know that? I mean, I think we all have this sense that, well, yes, I have a physical body, but there is more to me. And what we teach in the science of mind is that who you are is you are a spiritual being that happens to have clothed itself in a physical body for this lifetime, for these lessons. Now, this life was not the beginning for you, and when this life comes to a close, that is not by any means the end for you. This is just one stop on an infinite continuum of life. So we know that there is more to us than this physical body, more to us than there seems to be. We are mind, we are spirit, we are consciousness. This is what our teaching teaches us. And, and, and by consciousness, I mean the ability to know you are you, right? Consciousness has individualized spirit, God, the infinite mind has individualized as each and every one of us. And so since I brought up the word personality, let me say where I believe personality comes from. I believe that we come in, our spirit, our soul incarnates, and then everything we go through, everything that's said to us, everything that we experience, everything we listen to, all of that contributes to forming this personality. But let me tell you, if you know, and maybe you do, that your personality is kind of stinko, I'm sorry to say that, but you know, sometimes, you know, look, if nobody wants to be around you, that's the invitation right there. Gee, I should work on my personality. And what I want you to know is you can work on it. Absolutely. You pray in the affirmative and you affirm regularly and you can change from the inside out. Your, you say, well, this is just the way I am. Nobody is just the way they are. We are all spirit 
seeking a fuller and greater expression of itself. So we are God in the process of becoming more of itself. Life in you, the principle of life in you, has uniquely individualized itself. You know, Walt Whitman said, there is more to a man, uh, there is more to a man than is contained between his hat and his bootstraps, right? So we know that, right? This, we are not just this physical being, right? There is something so much more. And there are hidden powers, undeveloped resources, unimaginable, unimaginable depths to every single person's being. God, I love that. I just love that. Which, if we choose to, we can penetrate and bring to the surface and make of our life, and yes, certainly our personality, what we will. But first, I think we have to know what and who we really are. See, and my take on this today is, is different than it's been for the last 30 years. It's evolving, you know, because I, I'm trying to engage in the work as sincerely as I can. My take on this today, with regards to knowing who and what we really are, is that we, right now, are the beloved of God, and God is our beloved. Now, if you have a beloved, doesn't your beloved want to do everything for you that would contribute to your well-being, your happiness, your joy? Absolutely. And so this is our relationship with God, and I think we could hold it in this context that God wants me, God wants you, God wants all of us to experience the fullest life we could possibly experience, the best life, the most loving life, the most abundant life we could possibly experience. This is what the beloved wants for us. And there's nothing we want more than to be in communion, to be in relationship with that which is the beloved of our soul. So you, you, we all get to decide about our personality. We know where our flaws are, and we can bring those into conscious awareness, and we can start to work on this. Because you and I, individually, we alone hold the key to experiencing the larger life. Now, why would we even need to consider working on our personality a little bit? Because if life is not unfolding for you in the most abundant, glorious, and harmonious way, it may be that that is what is obstructing. Your personality may be what is obstructing the good from showing up in your life the way it could. You know, somewhere in you and I is the same imagination that has written every book, created every uh, great invention that's ever happened, painted every picture, written every song, you know, somewhere in you and I, there is the same imagination. We're all drawing from the one. So if all there is is within me and within you, how do I get it out? How do I bring it forward into greater expression? So Emerson said that imitation is suicide. So it's not about trying to be like somebody else or modeling or imitating or anything like that. But I think what we're really interested in is what we believe to be the very best version of ourselves. You know, the real you is something you discover. You know, you know, I know, we are part of God. We are emanations of the Most High. We are the beloved of the beloved, right? So God made us to be happy whole, complete, contented. I believe that that's so. And the real you is lovable. The real you is love itself, in fact. Happy, kind, whole, complete in every way. But you won't believe this about yourself if you don't believe it about everyone else as well. See, it's, it's one of those spiritual paradoxes. I have to believe it about you to believe it about myself. I have to believe it about myself to believe it about you. When we create something wonderful in life, I believe we are listening to the universe, that voice of God, the voice of spirit within us, and following its direction. So thoughts of love drawn from your innermost self make you a lovable person. Thoughts of patience from your innermost self make you a patient person. Thoughts of compassion from your innermost self make you a more compassionate person. We have an infinite capacity to grow and change and evolve. Don't think, well, this is the personality I'm stuck with. I can't do anything about it. That is not true at all. Ernest says in our textbook, if one detects unloveliness in another person, 
Perhaps it is because unloveliness is a strong component in oneself. Wow, Ernest just zings it to us, doesn't he? I just love that. It's like, you know, you're noticing that because it's in you. You're noticing that because it's in you. And really, the truth is, he was talking about physics. He's talking about the new science because we bring something to the seeing, and as soon as we start to observe, it changes what's being observed. So the image we see in the mirror, I think, is a projection of our own thought. No, we've probably all done this. You get up in the morning, you've got a full day ahead, and the last thing you do before you walk out the door is you look in the mirror, right? Make sure you know, you're all buttoned and zipped and you know, there's no English muffin in your teeth or anything like that. And I, I promise you, if you look in the mirror and say, yeah, you look pretty good, it's going to be a good day. You will walk out the door and that will absolutely be your experience because you have affirmed it. You've believed it. You've validated it looking at yourself in the mirror. That's how life will respond to you. But by the same token, if you look in the mirror just before you go out that door and you go, oh, God help me. What was I thinking? And that is how the universe will respond to you all day long, like you need God's help. Right? And so where did that start? This is, I think this is a great example. Where did that start? It all started with you, just having a quick little thought about yourself as you looked in the mirror. You know, we are all cradled, each and every one of us. We are cradled in the infinite. And what that means is that what you put out comes back. Love out, love comes in. If we identify ourselves with success, we will become more successful. If we identify ourselves with other good things, we will experience more of those good things. For us, the key to right living, I think, always comes back to affirmative prayer and meditation. Because Ernest says there is no real transformation without an ongoing practice of affirmative prayer and meditation. And I realize, you know, that I have to, that every day, there's a little doubt and a little fear and a little anxiety that creep up every day. They just creep up. And I think, I, honestly, I wasn't anxious when I went to bed. How can I wake up anxious? And I think, well, because there is a race consciousness. There is a field of thought of the world around us that's always pressing in on us. This is why it's so important that we do our spiritual work. So we get to have our own experience in consciousness and not the experience that everyone else is having in the race consciousness, the collective mind or what Jung called the herd mind. Uh, I think this is what we have to do if we want to become aware of the presence of God in and around us. And, and we do, absolutely, because that changes everything. You know, nothing can hinder the person who knows that he is dealing with the one power that created all from itself. Right? We're dealing with spirit, with God, with infinite mind, with consciousness that creates everything in the universe out of itself. And we live, we actually live because life lives in us. We move because there is a universal energy that activates and animates our being constantly. We think because there is a universal mind thinking through us and we exist because spirit has seen fit to give us life and God never makes a mistake. Isn't that good news? God never makes a mistake. We are the temple of the living God. So after all that, knowing that once again the ball is in our court, it's up to us to do with as we will, and there's no limit to that, which I think is just extraordinary. Ernest Holmes says that there is a law that responds to our thinking with mechanical regularity. And there is an ever availability of good, an ever availability of good. So at any moment, any moment on a dime, we can turn and experience a greater good. Let's do that in the week ahead. Let's pray. So we turn our attention inward for a moment now, recognizing that right here where we are, the fullness, the allness of God, God's infinite loving intelligent spirit is upon each and every one of us. In fact, that spirit of God is the most true, most real thing about us. And in this awareness of God being everywhere and within each and every one of us, I speak the word for us that we know that we are in a co-creative relationship with the principal power and presence of life itself. That God responds to us by working through us according to our belief and our thought. And I claim for each and every one of us that we are on the affirmative side of life, that our thought is uplifted, that the negativity of the past has no place here and now in our life. 
And I claim for each and every one of us, we step into that best version of ourselves. The person we know that we are capable of being, that person who gives their gifts to the world, who shows up as love and joy and service, that person whose talents and abilities are valued by life. We say yes to all of that. And we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear. We see them in our mind's eye. And we wrap our spiritual arms around them, knowing that they are loved, that they are cared for, their needs are met, and that perfect healing is happening in their life. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world that we live in. So emanating out from our consciousness, from our heart, is an energy of love and light and healing that we extend to all people everywhere, no one left out, no one excluded. We let our prayer touch every living soul on the face of the earth, healing, uplifting, inspiring. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we're blessed by being together today, that there is healing, that there is raising up, that each and every one of us remember a truth that has existed since before time, that we are one with the one, and all that we need is already provided. And so with an open, gracious, full heart, I say, thank you, God. I release this word into the law. I know it's done, and so it is. Together we all say, amen. Okay, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful, I am so blessed. Your gift over your heart as we say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I